2023 was a very disappointing season for the New York Jets. Let's take a look at some of the lessons the Jets learned from that campaign today on Locked On Jets. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome. This is indeed the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Friday, May 24th, 2024, and I'm your host, John B. from gangreennation.com. Thanking you so much for making the show your first listen or first watch every day. Subscribe to the show for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you get new episodes as soon as they're posted. If you enjoy the show and are listening on a podcast source, please give it a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube and enjoy the show, give this episode a big thumbs up. It helps us out and helps other Jets fans find the podcast. 2023 was a disappointing season for the New York Jets. There's no question about it. But there were some lessons to be learned. And today we're going to take a look at some of those lessons and figure out whether the Jets have learned those lessons based on what they did this offseason or have not learned those lessons. And, of course, this time last year, the Jets were talking big. And the Jets are once again talking big. Uh, the team is different, though. I, I think there's a, there's a difference to the team this year. This year I think the team has more talent in a lot of areas. I think it shows that in some ways – the, teams have, the team learned that maybe they were overrating themselves this time last year. And if you listen to the team through the offseason a year ago and through hard knocks and training camp, they were very impressed with themselves. They thought, I mean, I think there was a big uh, train of thought that trading for Aaron Rodgers was going to solve all of their problems. Now, of course, Aaron Rodgers went down four plays into the season, which was the biggest development of the Jets 2023 season. We're actually going to talk about that a little bit later. But I think Aaron Rodgers' injury in some ways kind of, provided camouflage for some of the other issues that were going on with the team during the 2023 season. It was very easy. And I think for Joe Douglas and Robert Sala, it was very easy to explain away the team's struggles because, well, Rogers went down. We were counting on Rogers to be our quarterback. In some ways it was very convenient for them because they could just say, well, Zach Wilson wasn't supposed to be our quarterback. Now, of course, Douglas and Sala were the brain trust that gave you Wilson as the backup quarterback. And they, these guys were talking all off season about how much confidence they had in Zach and how they were going to build Zach up. So, you know, that doesn't really pass the smell test. But I think there were clearly some other areas where the team was constructed poorly last year. And I think that the, the forefront of those areas was the offensive line. You know, this time last year, we were trying to talk ourselves into an offensive line that had, you know, Mackay Becton, who really had not played in, I mean, we're talking like close to three calendar years since he had really played a game because he missed the entire 2022 season with an injury he suffered in training camp. He missed every game except for like three quarters of the first game in 2021. So it really was you get, heading into last season. You'd have to go back to, you know, 2020 for the last time Mekhi Becton played a full game of competitive football. And Dwayne Brown, he was a guy the Jets signed. He was kind of an emergency signing after the, after Becton went down in 2022. They brought him back at 38 years of age, and he was coming off a pretty serious injury. And, you know, to count on one of these guys at your tackle spot was dicey. To count on both of them was kind of crazy. Now, Becton for the most part, stayed healthy. You know, he missed a little bit of time. He, he left the game in Denver, and there, there was a, there were some, some missed snaps. But Vector, for the most part, stayed healthy. He just wasn't very good, which was one of the dangers because, first of all, you know, he didn't really know how good Vector was going to be, first of all, coming off two injuries, and second of all, after a rookie season, which had some promise but was far from perfect. He didn't know exactly what Vector would be, and Brown was a guy who was old. He was really, really old, and he was already showing signs of decline. But Jets had more issues than that. They had a lot of injuries. One of them was Brown. Brown went down after the second game of the season. It was one of the one of the challenges with that the Jets did not give him reps in training camp. They he did not get reps in the preseason. Was he ever really healthy? You know, we don't know, but after two games, after two very poor games, he was he was down for the count. And then the Jets just suffered Jets suffered injury after injury during the course of the season. Most notably Elijah Barrett Tucker going down for the second straight year in a game at Denver. Also Joe Tipman uh, um, Joe Tipman who was the, Joe Tittman went down for a stretch. Tittman, Tittman replaced Connor McGovern at center, uh, who suffered a season-ending injury in the game against the Giants. Jets had a lot of injuries. So in some ways, the Jets just kind of had bad luck. And luck matters. We're going to talk about luck in a little bit. But I think one of the reasons I, I have a tough time giving the Jets a pass for their bad luck with their offensive line injuries is something I just mentioned. Plan A stunk. You know, if you're a Knicks fan, you, you're, you saw your team suffer a ton of injuries. And I've seen some Knicks, I've seen a few Knicks fans, not many, but I've seen a few Knicks, Knicks fans say like the team was outcoached by Indiana. That's not true. The Knicks suffered a million injuries. 
the Knicks were a really good team. I mean, the Knicks overcame a lot to win the two seed in the Eastern Conference this year. It's just they got to a point where they just suffered too many injuries in that series against Indiana to be able to win. That's one thing. If the Jets had like a great offensive line and they had star players and these guys went down injury after injury, you know, I could give them a pass because once you get down to like your third string guys, and there was, I mean, there were games last year where the Jets were playing with practice squad level players because they had so many injuries. You can give them a pass then. But the plan A was not very good to begin with. And they did not have any sort of depth. Now, no team has great offensive line depth, but you certainly could do better than what the Jets had last year. So the Jets' offensive struggles, this gets me back to my major point. Obviously, you know, Aaron Rodgers is at the top of the list for the reason the injury is at the top of the list for reasons the Jets struggled on the offensive side of the ball last year. But it's very convenient because Zach Wilson you know, was already kind of a, a guy who was not popular in the fan base. He already took a lot of the blame for the Jets' failures in 2022, which was fair. I mean, Zach Wilson did hold the team back in 2022. But in 2023, I think if you were watching, I don't think Zach Wilson was that much worse than your typical backup quarterback in this league. I mean, he wasn't very good, but most backup quarterbacks aren't very good. Most backup quarterbacks aren't going to succeed if you put a, if you put something bad in front of them. And Zach Wilson had some really bad players in front of him blocking for him. And when you can't control the trenches, it just makes it, it you can't function as an offense. Now there's you know there's there's this debate you know is it more is it better to have skilled players or offensive linemen? And of course you want both. You can't be a black hole at either spot though. And the Jets were a black hole on the offensive line a year ago, and they just I mean they just got manhandled game after game after game. And I don't know how you can run an offense like that. I mean look at Brees Hall. I mean. We talk about Brees Hall almost rushing for a thousand yards behind that offensive line is a miracle. Brees still broke big runs, but on a play to play basis, he was not super efficient. You know, he had a pretty low success rate, which judges you whether each individual play is success, what percentage of your runs are successful. Now, either Brees is a bad back or you know the offensive line stunk. I'm going to go with the offensive line stunk. stunk. I, I think Brees Hall is a pretty good back. I think Brees Hall is a really, really good back. So I'm not, I'm not going to blame Brees for that. And, you know, it, I, we talk a lot about Nathaniel Hackett not calling deep passes, and that's fair. But you can't run deep passes if you can't protect because it takes time for the receivers to get down the field. You have to be able to protect for a couple of seconds. So all of these issues up front, the Jets had. And on the other side of the ball, the defensive line was part of the reason the Jets were competitive in the early part of the season. I mean, the defensive line took games over. They took over that Buffalo game. They took over the win in Denver, which the Jets very easily could have given away because of how bad their offense was. They took over the game in Philadelphia. I mean, the Jets won two two games last year without Sauce Gardner playing their, their top corner. So it shows you the importance of controlling the trenches. And, you know, I, I think part of it's like fantasy football has taken such a prevalence in this day and age that people don't maybe don't value the line as much as they should. And look, of course, you need playmakers also. You know, it's a, it's not an either or. You, you need to have both. But last year was a case study in how if you can't control the line of scrimmage, you can't have success. Or on the defensive side of the ball, how you could steal a couple of games if, you, if your defensive line controls the line of scrimmage when you don't have that great of a team. So what did the Jets do this offseason? Well, they invested in the offensive line. Now, will it work? That remains to be seen. I think there are some question marks there. You know, you're dealing with two of the five oldest starting tackles in the league in uh, Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses, but they're both good players. They both have good track records. And on some level, you know, the only way you last till 33 in the NFL is you got to be a good player. If you're not a good player, you're out of the league long before 33. And Joe Tipman entering year two. Hopefully Elijah Vera Tucker stays healthy. You know, John Simpson, that one could go either way. The drafting of Olu Fashanu. The Jets remade their offensive line. So I think it's fair to say that, you know, and maybe this isn't a lesson that they necessarily learned because Joe Douglas through his tenure here since 2019 has put quite a bit of emphasis on building the offensive line. He just hasn't been very good at picking players. But I think it's clear that the Jets took what happened seriously last last year. You know, as, as much as the Jets may blame Aaron Rodgers' injury, and of course that had a lot to do with it, there were other problems. You know, if, if it was just Aaron Rodgers' injury, you would not have four new projected opening day starters on the offensive line this year. You would not have drafted a tackle at 11. I think it shows you the Jets have learned the value of controlling the trenches. Now, I had you on the Lockdown Jets podcast. We're going to talk about a lesson that can't really be learned, or if it can be learned, there's nothing the Jets can really do about it. It's just the role of luck. And I think it plays a bigger role than we want to admit in the NFL. And certainly the Jets had about as bad of luck at a key spot as as you as the team could have last year. I think you know what it is. We're going to talk about the role of luck in the NFL as we continue here on this Friday edition of Locked On Jets. 
Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors got you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, oh, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listener or first watch every day. A big shout out to you every day as this is a daily podcast covering the New York Jets. We have new episodes each day through the week, Monday through Friday. And if you're an everyday or who loves Locked On Jets... That must mean you're a fan of the Locked On Podcast Network, so you should check out Locked On Sports Today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube, the free Amazon cha- uh, or the Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today on Locked On Jets, we're talking about lessons that can be learned from the Jets' 2023 disappointment. And look, there's no question about it. 2023 was very disappointing. The Jets finished 7-10. and 10. And it was a, it was it was a shaky seven and ten. I mean, this was not like your typical seven win team. This was a team that was out of the running by week sixteen. They were out of the playoff race. One of the first three teams eliminated. Then the last three weeks of the season, they got two games against the bottom three opponents in the NFL and won and won those games. Um, so, what lessons can be learned? Well, unfortunately, there's a lesson that like teams have no control over, and that's luck plays a bigger role than we want to admit in the NFL. You can do everything right in this league. And things can just fall apart. I mean, I think the ultimate example of that would be the Indianapolis Colts, who, you know, back five years ago this time, they were looking like a team that was going to be really good. They were coming off a divisional round appearance. They had built the strongest offensive line in the league. They had kind of gotten past some of their organizational dysfunction that led them to wasting some Andrew Luck's early years. And then Andrew Luck retires. And the Colts have never been able to figure out the quarterback situation since. It's kind of sunk the team. I mean, I don't know if that Colts team was winning the Super Bowl. That, that was a team coming off a final eight appearance with the best offensive line in football. But their quarterback retiring changed everything. And for the New York Jets, I, look, the quarterback getting injured last year changed everything. You know, the fourth play of the season. Aaron Rod- I mean, when your quarterback suffers an injury on the fourth play of the season and misses the rest of the year, it makes it really tough to operate. Um, you know, that, that play, you, if you look at it, what happens? Dwayne Brown miss, whiffs on a cut block. Rodgers probably holds the ball a little too long. Look, guys made mistakes, but that doesn't mean you end up with an injury. If a guy got injured every time an offensive lineman missed a block, just would have had a thousand injuries last year at the quarterback position. It just an Achilles injury. You know, look, I mean, we can speculate on the role the, the turf played at MetLife Stadium. That turf certainly has gotten a lot of grief, but that injury was just, I mean, it's just a freak occurrence. I mean, if Rodgers hadn't, you know, stepped that wrong way there, maybe he plays the full season. And Look, I, I know I mentioned in the first segment that it wasn't all Zach Wilson. And I think that's a, it's an important distinction to make is that it doesn't have to be all, you know, when a team struggles, it doesn't have to be all one thing or all another thing. Both things can come into play. You know, the Jets' overall talent on offense last year, especially on the offensive line, that had an impact on the Jets' struggles offensively. But look, I think anybody would have to admit the Aaron Rodgers injury was a really, really big deal because Jets went out and got Rodgers. And I think last this time last year, maybe they were expecting a little too much from Rodgers because I think they were expecting him to be able to navigate around an offensive line that looked really shaky. And I think, you know, maybe expectations were a little too high for a 39-year-old quarterback. You know, I think there, there was a mindset that he was going to play at an MVP level. He was going to play like at a level in his prime, which could have happened, but was anything but a guarantee. But losing him, Dropping to Zach Wilson at the most critical spot on the field, you know, that obviously played a big role in it for the team. And, you know, we talked early in the season about how the Jets kind of fought tough the first couple of weeks. I mean, there was some luck involved in that. Um, you know, close games in the NFL, they turn on a dime. You know, the Jets Jets forced five turnovers against Buffalo opening night. But, I mean, there was a critical fumble or two there that just kind of bounced the Jets way. There's, you know, there's no recovering fumbles is not a skill. There were, you know, there were a couple games in the early part of the season where the Jets had a greater than 80% chance to lose in the fourth quarter, if you look at some of the analytics, that they came back and won. And this brings you to, you know, kind of a bigger point about the NFL. Every single year, you know, about half the playoff teams are new. About half the teams that made the playoffs the year before missed, but about half of the, the teams in the playoffs did not make the playoffs the year before in this league. And why is that? Well, there's only 17 games. It's not a very big sample size, you know. 
you take a look at through a baseball season, baseball season, 162 games, just imagine like a team's worst 17 game stretch. You have the best team in the, you have the best team in baseball. They're probably gonna have a bad 17 game stretch during the course of 162 games. And the worst team in baseball, they're going to probably have like a, a half a month where they're really, really hot. So there's over the course of a long season, over the course of 162 games, the luck balances out and the cream rises. The best teams are the best teams over the baseball seasons. The baseball regular season is built to follow logic because it's long enough that the luck kind of cancels each other out. You have bad luck during the season. You have good luck during the season. At the end of the day, the teams are typically, you know, the, the end record is typically a reflection, pretty good reflection on how good a team it really is. In football, that's not the case because you only get 17 games. You know, even even hockey and basketball, you have 82 games. You know, you get you have you know, you can have a bad 17 game stretch for a good team in basketball. You have a bad uh, 17 game stretch for a good team in hockey, and vice versa. The NFL is difficult, and part of it, this is a league with great parity. Um, about half of the games in the league are decided by one score or less. And, you know, the Buffalo Bills are a good example of this. You know, they started six and six last year. They went two and six in it, it, during that stretch. They went two and six in one score games. They went then their season in a five game winning streak. They won three in a row once in that five game winning streak. There were three wins in one score games. Now, did the Buffalo Bills figure out how to finish in December during that five game winning streak where they won three games in a row that were one score games where they did they lack a killer instinct early in the season? Well, most of the studies that have shown this have, would say the answer is no, that there's a lot of randomness in closed games. And that's one of the reasons, you know, the great teams typically blow their blow a lot of opponents out. You know, there have actually there's been, been a lot of research on this in the past. And you know, one of the things they find, because there's always this theory that, you know, having the great quarterback is is the difference maker for you because he wins. the He delivers the clutch wins. And of course, you know, there are moments where that happens. Brady and Mahomes do that. They they have iconic victories in the Super Bowl and closed games. But over the course of, of over the course of a full season. One of the things we, sh one of the things that the, the studies show is teams generally, generally one score games are a coin flip. You, you get a good team against a bad team, and those games are generally a coin flip. What separates the good teams from the bad teams? The good teams are the ones with the most blowout wins, and the bad teams are the most the ones with the most blowout losses. And what's this? What's the point I'm getting at? Is luck's involved in a lot of games because like half the games in the NFL are decided by one score or less. So, you know what a, a, a streak of a hot streak in one score games that can make your season you know that could turn you into a playoff team or it could take a, a what would be a wild card team and turn it into a division champion with with a high seed or really bad luck in one score games could take a good team and knock it out of the playoffs you need to have luck and you need to have injury luck i mean injury on some level you know when we're talking about soft tissue injuries maybe there's there's something that goes into the idea that teams need to train their guys well and teams with bad strength and conditioning coaches you know maybe suffer more soft tissue injuries. And of course, there's the issue with the MetLife turf where there are studies that show players who play on turf are more likely to suffer serious injuries. But there's a lot more luck that goes into the NFL season than, than we want to admit. And last year, the Jets had some good luck, but the Jets had the worst luck a team could have because they lost their quarterback the first the first series of the season. They lost their quarterback. And this year, you know, you hope luck will be better. You hope you have better injury luck, not just with Rodgers, but with some of the other guys. Because look, they have some other guys who are kind of older players who are risky with injury, and you hope the ball bounces your way in one-score games. And if they do, perhaps this team could be set up for a big season. But the problem is, like, there's nothing the Jets can really do about that. There was something the Jets could do about their offensive line, and there was something the Jets could do about another area that was a weakness last year. It was their coaching staff. As we continue here on this Friday edition of Locked On Jets, we'll talk about one final lesson from from the 2023 season. It's not it's not a lesson I'm sure the Jets have learned. And we'll just go into more detail on that, continuing here on this Friday edition of Locked On Jets. Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by Yahoo Finance. When it comes to your financial future, you think you've done it all. You've saved, you've researched, you've invested all that you can. Now you need to take those investments to the next level by using what every financial great uses, Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. They are the number one finance destination, providing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. Securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other, one, and other investments. A comprehensive perspective of what sets apart great investors, and it's how Yahoo Finance ensures you have the insight to look at your wealth it's in its entirety. And with a community of over 90 million users each month, their real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. 
For a comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. This is the Locked On Jets podcast here on this Friday. We're talking about lessons the Jets can learn from the 2023 season, a disappointing season. Jets hope to avoid some of the same pitfalls they had last season. Now, there are some you can't avoid. I mean, the quarterback getting injured, that just shows you the role of luck in the NFL. But how the Jets responded to the quarterback getting injured, you know, that, that was not something that covered the coaching staff in glory, in my view. And you've heard it from people with the team. You've heard it in the media. You've heard some suggestions from you know from people in the building that the Jets offense last year it's not so much that it was an offense built for Aaron Rodgers it was essentially Aaron Rodgers' offense where the Jets were giving Aaron Rodgers carte blanche Aaron Rodgers was pretty much allowed to do whatever he wanted and a quarterback of his stature there's some logic behind that you know Peyton Manning was the same way Brady was the same way at some point you gain such stature that the offense becomes yours after Aaron Rodgers got injured though there was a talk they didn't adjust and look, I mean, I think it's a, har- it's a harsh thing to say, but it's almost like the coaching staff threw up their arms and said, we give up. And, you've, and this isn't just me speaking. This is people that were in the building who have said this. I mean, you can read some of the interviews that have been given from people who were there. You know, there was no adjustment. They were kind of just, and part of the challenge is that Aaron Rodgers is the offense. So Aaron Rodgers is running everything. You know, he, he decides what he likes at the line. He's changing things at the line. He wants to see what, what's out there. And you know if they want them, if you want there's something he wants to see he'll he'll motion, he'll move the guy in motion. You know, Zach Wilson needed more help last year. And look, I'm not saying Zach Wilson would have been great. I'm not saying Zach Wilson would have been good, but I think they could have gotten more out of Zach Wilson. I mean, look at last year was the year of the backup quarterback. And look, I'm not saying Zach Wilson's good, but look at some of the other guys who at least did more than Zach Wilson. Are those guys more? Are those guys significantly more talented than Zach Wilson? No. So their coaching staff did a better job making their schemes quarterback friendly. And, you know, if there were, I mean, there was the famous, infamous article in The Athletic where Robert Sala, instead of, you know, figuring out ways the Jets could try and manufacture some offense, he was, he was Googling, you know, what coaches' records were, how many games coaches typically lost when they played their backup quarterback. I mean, I, I remember after the first game against Miami on Black Friday, of course, the, the famous, you know, tail Mary play that got returned for a touchdown. But the, the, the thing that I really remembered from that game was how easy Miami manufactured, how easily Miami manufactured offense. It wasn't that, you know, it's not that you can build a, build a successful offense around manufactured plays, but you can at least pick up a couple first downs by using motions, by, you know, utilizing your players correctly. By design, you ought to be able to pick up a couple first downs a game, and the Jets never did this. And it was like they, they weren't interested in doing it. And that goes back to Nathaniel Hackett. And there have been reports that have come out recently that the Jets tried to replace Hackett during this offseason, but did, but failed. And part of this is, you know, the Jets, I, I think they were afraid of how Rodgers would react to Hackett going. So they tried to do the, this, they essentially tried to layer Hackett. They essentially tried to hire somebody who, who would be like at a higher level than Hackett and Hackett would just hang around to be Rodgers' buddy. And that was never going to work. And, you know, you had to bring in a new, new offensive mind. And well, you know, look, Rodgers is always going to have a lot of deference at the line. I don't like the idea that you know Rogers is just going to cancel hack it out and that that'll be fine because first of all that's like that's something that's driven me crazy about the Jets through the years is that they don't they the Jets have this tendency to not address problems it's to just try and ignore problems or try and work around problems instead of just addressing them head on but the second reason I don't love it is you know you can say Hackett's going to be irrelevant I'm not sure even for a great quarterback that having an offensive coach who's irrelevant is the best thing for them. Let's think about that guy over in Kansas City, Mahomes, you know, best quarterback in the NFL, going going to go down as the best quarterback of his generation. And look, if you gave Mahomes Hackett, I'm sure Mahomes would make Hackett irrelevant. I'm sure he could work around him. But Mahomes doesn't have an irrelevant coach. Mahomes has a coach who can help him because no matter how high of a level you play the quarterback position, you have a good coach. He can he can put you in an even better position. He can co- come up with concepts that make your life easier. And I think back to, you know, Rodgers' last couple of years in Green Bay, and there was you know, there was a lot of a lot out there about how he was not happy with a lot of the way the Packers organization functioned. And that goes back to them drafting Jordan Love. And, you know, he was he was mad that he got replaced, essentially. He was mad that the Packers thought about life without him. And there's, you know, all sorts of things that, that went into that. But one of the issues he had, you know, he did not love Matt LaFleur's offense. And, you know, he talked about it. He actually was pretty vocal about this, that, you know, he doesn't like having a lot of motions. And that goes back to his stature where, you know, he knows what he's doing at the line of scrimmage. He knows to bring a guy in motion 
you know, Peyton Manning was like this too. Peyton Manning liked a stagnant offense. Peyton Manning liked an offense that there were not a lot of bells and whistles because Peyton was the sheriff. Peyton, Peyton knew exactly what he was looking for. He knew exactly how to manipulate a defense. He knew exactly like how to force a defense to make a tell. So, you know, he was like, I don't want to, Peyton was always like, I don't want a lot of extraneous motion. But I think one thing that was clear in Green Bay is that Rodgers, you know, as smart as he is and as great as he is and as, you know, as much of an intellectual he is when it comes to football, especially at the line of scrimmage, LaFleur helped him out. And there were some things that they butted heads on and they kind of met halfway. And LaFleur maybe altered his offense a little bit. But I think at the end of the day, Rodgers was made better by some of the concepts LaFleur put in because I think Rodgers saw that these things made his life better. And so this goes back to what we're talking about. As you know, I hear all the time, Rodgers won two MVPs in this system. Well, he won two MVPs in LaFleur's system. LaFleur kind of forced him to do some things he wasn't that crazy about. And then I think he maybe realized that you know, this, this stuff works pretty well. Hackett's just there to kind of be Rodgers' buddy. And I think that this hurts the Jets from the standpoint that, you know, Rodgers doesn't have a brain, doesn't have a, like a, a, an equal. He doesn't, have, he doesn't have another brainy guy as his coach helping him out. But this will really impact the Jets if he they suffer another injury. Because, you know, it, it's like everybody's saying, well, Rodgers will cancel Hackett out. Hackett will be irrelevant this year. Weren't we saying that last year? Weren't we saying when all the skepticism when Hackett was hired, uh, when that when that was happening, didn't everybody say, well, it won't matter because Rodgers is the quarterback? Is it uh, look, we certainly hope Rod again, this goes back to luck. We certainly hope Rodgers will be healthy again this year. But what, what if Rodgers gets injured again? I mean, did we did we learn nothing? We're saying are we saying it's impossible Rodgers could get injured again? I wish the Jets had brought in a better offensive mind. So we're, on the show, we've we talked about three lessons learned. One's that, one, le one lesson I think the Jets have learned pretty well, that's working on the trenches. The other is one that maybe they learned, but they couldn't really do anything about. That's just luck. Luck is things you can't control. In the NFL, there are things you can control and things you can't control. The third is having coaches who are prepared, having coaches who can elevate your players. And I don't think the Jets did very well in that area. Hopefully it doesn't hurt them. Anyway, that's all for today's episode. This has been the Lockdown Jets podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Your team every day is our motto. As always, if you enjoyed the show, hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode. If you enjoyed the show and are listening on the podcast, of course, give it a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube and enjoy the show, give this episode a big thumbs up. Helps us out. Helps other Jets fans find the podcast. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. Enjoy your long weekend. We'll be back next week to talk more Jets.